I'm coming back to campus from Hinsdale, Illinois. It's been about three months since beginning of March since I've seen them. So I'm excited. We can get to see each other in small groups, obviously social distancing. Um, we have little pods that we get to work out in. Um, and I, we all get to get tested tomorrow, uh, COVID testing, and then quarantined for a week before we get to get tested again and then slowly get back into things if we, if we get two negatives. So my room is still a mess as I just moved back in and I have clothes everywhere. I'm actually very nervous to have the things stuck up my nose, but gotta do what you gotta do. Some of my teammates are near me. We're all socially distanced, but um, what are you guys expecting for the testing? From what I've heard, I don't know. Some people say it's bad, some people say it's not that bad, so we'll have to find out. That was like my main concern was just that everyone would be healthy and that we'd be safe. Um, I trust that if anyone ever where to get sick, Michigan State is gonna handle it well. So I wasn't concerned about that and my parents weren't either, but I was just like nervous about coming back and seeing how different things will be. We just got done testing. It was pretty bad for me, I don't know, but I, I, I got through it and my eyes were a little watery. The people were super cool though. And it was really fast, three seconds but it was pretty bad. <laughs> you wanna say anything? Yeah. Oh my God, I have to sneeze, I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't bad. Um, it was quick in and out, it was very efficient. We were only in the building for 10 minutes and now we have the rest of our day. Yeah. Yep, and we just exited here. It's a one-way flow of people. Super easy. I see some of my teammates still going. Here comes another one. How'd it go? So far, so good. So far, so good? Let's stay distance, Liz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and here's another one. How'd it go, Bex? Um, I'm crying. Yeah, you're crying? I think they definitely have had our best interests. I mean, some of the things like that we have to do, like, I, I don't know, we all joke about like, oh, this is kind of silly. Like, I have to be six feet apart from this girl, even though I live with her. But in, in the end, like, our trainer, Kelly, keeps saying, like, this is just so that we can have a season. Like this is so we have a season, we all stay healthy. And I think like they're doing a really great job with everything, giving us like snack bags and just making sure we have everything we need. You just got a water bottle with names on it uh, that we get to bring to and from once we're allowed to um, start practicing again. We're really trying our best just to be with our pods because if for some reason someone in a different pod did get exposed, only that pod would have to sit out, whereas if we were with them, the whole team would have to sit out. So we're doing our best to just be with our pods and it's usually like who we're living with. So in my case, I'm actually living alone, but the girls that I'm with are all living together so I can go be with them. The birthday girl. <laughs> My friends are amazing! <laughs> so it was Naya's birthday, her 20th birthday. The third day we were back, we surprised her um, with a like little picnic. She had no idea we were even doing it. Then while we were eating and like just playing games out there, the rest of our team, we arranged like a drive-by. It was so cute. She was so happy. It was the first time we all got to see each other being back. Even though like everyone else in the team was just in their car and I could only see them from a distance, like it was so nice being able to see everyone and it's hard not to run up and hug everyone, but I know like that was really special for Naya and our whole team. So it was a really good day. Workout pause. No. What happened? Workout pause. I just worked out with a few of my teammates in my pod and now we're walking in to get tested for the second time. Uh, luckily our entire team was negative last time we got tested. So that means that if we all test negative again today, um, we get to start getting back in the gym. Usually find out about two days later, so hopefully Wednesday. The three stations that we can go to and then we get tested down there. All done. Gibby, thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> 
Gigi. How are you feeling? I'm very excited. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. I'm now ready to walk downstairs. My group starts on the court first, so I'm gonna head down there with my group first. Being back is just like, I can't really describe it, it's so nice. The first day we were back in the gym, we were all just like giddy happy because we were like, oh my gosh, we're back. We're touching volleyball, it's like there's a net. It was just like a little kid like in a candy shop type of happy just to be back on the court. So T's over there on a carpet square, Naya's on hers, and we're all spread out individually on our carpet squares. Social distancing. Gibby, what are you doing? Sanitizing. Sanitizing the balls. The balls. Okay. Being, Every ball once we're done. Being responsible. Oh, okay. I think it's kind of hard because I go back and forth with being like, oh, I want a season, I want a season, I want a season no matter what. And also like, okay, it's bigger than just volleyball right now. Like this is like a pandemic. People's lives are at risk. If it's putting people in danger, then we shouldn't have a season. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost being like selfish thinking about myself and volleyball, but I also like, just don't want to lose that focus because I'd much rather be the girl who is working every single day for a season we don't have than to be someone who, that isn't working and then we do have a season. I think that's our whole team's idea is just like to work, work, work and just hope and pray that we have a season and then if we don't, then we're just going to keep working until we do. If I have to wash off every single volleyball after I touch it so that we can have a season, I'll do it. <laughs> Yesterday, we got the news that the Big Ten is postponing all fall sports, our seasons, until hopefully the spring. Um, so for us, this means that we will not be playing volleyball, football, field hockey, soccer, and any other fall sport in the fall, um, which was pretty devastating to hear. Um, but when it comes down to it, um, there are bigger things going on right now. If it's going to be risking anyone's safety and health and anyone's life, God forbid. Um, we don't wanna be playing to put anyone at risk, but we have really gotten a mindset of just, our goals don't change. Whether it happens in December in a national championship or in April in a national championship, our goals don't change. Yes, it's disappointing that we have to wait to play. And of course, everyone wanted to get in the gym and play in Jenison as quickly as we could. I'm really proud of how my team has been responding and how we've just been coming together and supporting each other and just understanding the severity of the situation and trying to keep each other as safe as we can. Unprecedented moment in the modern history of college football. The Big Ten will not play this fall. The league just announced all fall sports are going to be postponed. It was in the middle of practice, and I just hear the double horn sooner than expected, and Coach Tucker calls everybody into the weave, and you know he told us that there will be no football this fall. You know, I was kind of devastated. Okay, man. Listen up. Okay, so the the uh, season has been postponed. There will be no football this fall. Okay, I'm very, very proud of this group. Okay, and we're gonna do everything we can to play in the spring. Okay. You know, a lot of guys were in shock. You don't, you don't really know what to say. You know, football hasn't been canceled in 150 years, so it's uh, it was different. But I think overall. Guys are seeing the positives of this and seeing that we get more time to prepare, um, more time to, you know, master our offense, new new offense and defenses. So, it, it was weird, but I think overall it's going to be a positive impact on our team. 
it was for me, it was a toss up. You know, I was 50 50 on the decision because, like, part of me wanted to be out there playing, but then also another part of me wanted to make sure I was safe because I want to be able to go home and see my family whenever I have the opportunity. I feel like the positivity that we have in our team, a lot of it comes from Coach Tucker because, you know, he's always saying, keep pushing, stay hungry, don't lose hope because we will play football at some point, we just don't know when. It's been a year of change and a year of possible growth. Like I said, um, you have a choice in life. I kind of feel like you could either choose to view all the negativities in life or you could view everything in a positive manner. If I could sum this year up in one word, I think it would be growth. Um, you know, on the field and also off the field. You know, being at home and being with my two older brothers and learning from them and learning from uh, the people around me it really has helped me grow and has helped me become a better person. It brought a big deal of, I don't want to say relief because it makes it sound like we didn't want to have a season, but it's a relief that we finally got an answer. From this point, I'm hopeful for, you know, a season for me to show the world what I got and what our team can do and how good our team can be. I'm hopeful for uh, things to get back to normal. Just, uh, just, I'm just hopeful for this team to come together and, and have some fun. Moving forward, I'm just hopeful that, that everyone, for everyone's safety. Hopeful for a lot of things right now. I'm hopeful that people just become, you know, more open-minded. Hope everybody, it gives everybody a chance to slow down, work on their mental health. Hope everybody just kind of can approach everything from a positive standpoint. Like, if they could get through a pandemic and be fine, then they could tackle any other issue in their life later on. The crowd roars. He's to the left of Connor Cook. The snap. Hand off to Jack. Look Running at him. His right. Stiff arms at the five. No! Heads for the right side. Jack <laughs> Allen into the end zone. Bob Touchdown, Bob MSU. 65, Brian Allen. Well, you know, I grew up like any other normal kid. I'm, I had two brothers, Jack and Brian, and it was a little chaotic sometimes, but a lot of times it, there was a lot of love. And one of the things my dad told all of us when we were young is you got what you earned. And I've carried that with me through most of my life. And I know that my brothers have done the same. And all we've really tried to do is just find the inches each and every day and earn what we can. And luckily, that's what got us here. It was definitely competitive. I remember there's a ton of stories where it's just like me, Jack, and Brian, like all in the wrestling room. And I'd be watching them wrestle. and. It was just something I always wanted to do, so being able to actually end up doing it was really nice. And then obviously, like with all the things they accomplished, I was always like goal chasing and trying to accomplish the same things that they did. So there's definitely a lot of competition. And then we were always outside just climbing trees, being stupid kids and seeing who could throw a rock the farthest, seeing who could run faster, just always being outside. They've kind of applied pressure to me my whole life, and I don't know, I've never really thought of it as pressure, more of just like a privilege, just like being able to have them in my corner for everything that I've done, because it's not like they were rooting against me, like everything that I did, they were with me and trying to get me to be the best that I could be. I'm very thankful that I've had the opportunity to have them as brothers. I love them so much, and I, I owe them the world. They've done everything for me to be here. The first two weeks of camp, I don't think I won a single rep, and it was just so frustrating. And I remember I'd just like go back to my dorm room and I'd just feel like I was just disappointing my family just by being here. And I wasn't living up to what Jack and Brian have done. And I mean, I never really expect to like live up to what they do. I just always want to do the best that I could do. It just felt like my best wasn't even good enough to be here. So that was a little bit hard to accept at first, but kind of like I said, my, my dad, when we were young, he always hammered into our heads, you got what you earned. And so 
just started working from that point on and kept trying to be the best that I could be every day. Your hands hit that thing and your feet follow. Last one, last one. Scope, scope. Get your hands on it. It was right definitely now. a little tough love just because, like, when you're out on the field, it's a lot different. He doesn't, like, feel like he's your brother. He's more just like your teammate. He said a couple things to me about it, but nothing too hurtful. He definitely helped me a ton, though, outside of practice. Like, when we'd be doing extra stuff, we'd always be snapping after practice or just, like, going through steps after practice. and. Most of the things I know now are because of him and I'm very thankful he was here for me. I was lucky enough to be on the travel squad, so like every away game and home game, we would be staying at the Kellogg or a different hotel and the captains would come up and, on Friday nights and just give us like a little pregame speech and whenever he would give pregame speeches, I'd always just like start sitting up in my chair and I'd be ready to play on Friday nights just by the things he would say. And, I don't know if the other guys around the room felt the same way, but I know that for me personally is very motivating. And just being able to see him accomplish his goals and do the things that he wanted to do just made me very proud of him and very happy for him. During my quarantine, I spent all my time with Jack. We'd go from like working on the field in the morning to uh, like later in the afternoon, like I'd try and watch like a little bit of film on my own and then I would like sit down with him and watch a game. With COVID and things a little slower, kind of coach him up as well as I could and kind of show him some of the things that I've learned and things that have helped me. The best way I learn is by them just telling me the brutal truth, like the honest truth. I don't want to beat around the bush. I want to know like what I'm doing exactly wrong so I can fix it. And Jack's really good at not beating around the bush. So it helped a ton. In any family, the older you get, the closer you get with your siblings. When you're younger, you're rivals. And the older you get, they become your best friends and you root for them. Being able to really learn from their experiences. I like read a quote the other day and it said that like somebody that doesn't educate themselves on history is bound to repeat it. And just seeing what Jack's gone through and seeing what Brian's gone through, I know that the NFL is short-lived and it's not for long. And so every day I'm just gonna put in more work than I did the previous day to be the best that I could be for Michigan State and for myself. When a pandemic and things like this hit, I think people really start to freak out. And when people freak out, they usually like need somebody to look to. It's difficult, but life's full of valleys and mountaintops and you can't let the valleys get too low and the mountaintops get too high. Things like this are gonna happen. You make plans and God laughs at you. When that happens, you just gotta put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. I know that my freshman year, I thought I was the worst kid on the team. I was really freaking out. The person I had to look to was Brian. Just being able to have him here and see what he's done for me, that helped me become a little bit more of a leader myself. And just knowing that when this situation hit, guys can turn to me whenever they want. And I'll be ready and I'll be there for them. Doesn't matter who it is, I'll be there for them. <laughs> Matt Allen is a very great leader. You know that he's going to do what he needs to do, and then he's going to be vocal, and he's going to tell you, like, you need to step it up. I feel like he wasn't as vocal his younger years, but he's definitely grown into the leader that he is now, just being able to, like, talk to people and also show it through his work and through his action. He's also helped me, like, spiritually grow. He's a really great guy. I'm really just looking at it as an opportunity to grow more, grow more as a person, grow more as a football player strengthen myself in the weight room, continue to build off the things that the coaching staff has already taught us. The biggest part about it is you just gotta look at the positives because if you're focusing on the negatives, then your whole life's gonna be negative. I think he works harder than me and Brian ever did. With how committed he is to everything, every night he's stretching. He's like, hey, you wanna stretch? I'm like, no, nah, I've been there, I've done that. I'm, I'm good sitting here watching. Even mentally he's matured and He's just growing as a person too, which is cool to see. All in all, he's turning into a pretty good guy. They show him how to do it. So Michigan State does. 
and the kicks in the butt from the brothers and the other teammates doesn't hurt either. When football's over, I mean, I'm very comfortable with them getting out into the world and figuring out what they want to do and who they are. It's honestly been a dream come true. Sophomore year of high school, I literally used to pray for two things, and it was a scholarship to Michigan State and a state championship in wrestling. And luckily, the Lord blessed me with those two things. And being able to represent my family as well, that's just a blessing. And I hope that I just put in enough work that one day they could be proud of me. I'm very proud of him. I think everything he's done, I think, has been harder because his brothers have set such a high bar. Pressure makes diamonds. <laughs> Every day hasn't been easy, but it's definitely been a journey and I've definitely grown from it and very blessed that I picked this place and just very honored to have the opportunity to be here and compete for the Spartans.